That's right, that's the super dial. The 25 year old dial. My name is Nathaniel Atta, and once again I welcome you to the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM, which is also live on my Joy Online TV on YouTube. We're streaming live on our Facebook wall, so you can join us. Send that poster out, tell a friend to tell a friend it's time for the Joy Sports Link. I'd like to say a very big thank you to the rest of the team, current first team bringing us news files. And of course, the Joy News team bringing us um, the midday news. Guess what? Today marks exactly 10 years since Ghana won her opening game at the South Africa 2010 FIFA World Cup. And we're honored to have the company of a great gentleman who was there in the thick of affairs. You all love him. You all love the way he conducts himself in the goalpost. And I'm sure you'd all love to listen to him as well. Richard Olele Kingston is my guest today on the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM. And of course, remember, we're streaming live on my Joy Online TV. There's a lot to talk about. But before we get down to the business of Richard Olele Kingston, the goalkeeping great, let's just go back to a conversation that Joy Sports George Addo Jr. had with one of the men who were there at South Africa 2010. They were tasked with the responsibility of making massive impact at this tournament, being the very first hosted on African soil. And I'm talking about the Bafana Bafana of South Africa. Well, there was a raster head or dreadlocked forward called Sifiwe Chabalala. You remember him, don't you? Well, not so tall, very, very, you know, witty on the pitch and uh, scored one very interesting goal at the FIFA World Cup in South Africa, his homeland. Well, let's just throw back a little bit with uh, Sipiwe Chabalala and George Addo Jr. as they had this conversation. And after that, we take you into that big conversation that we have with Richard Olili Kingston here on the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM. My name is Nathaniel Atto. You can just, uh, you know, click on the sports page uh, of myjoyonline.com. You can follow the links and, of course, um, follow our Twitter page, our Twitter handle. It's at joysportsgh. The same for Instagram as well. And um, on Joy 997 FM, you can see this live stream. You can also join the conversation with your text messages on WhatsApp. It's plus 233-244-340-437. Plus 233-244-340-437. Let's take a listen to Zipiwe Chabalala and George Addo Jr. <laughs> Welcome to Ghana. You are live on the Joy News Channel on Multi TV. How are you doing this morning? Um, good thanks and uh, good morning to you and good morning to uh, my lovely people at home and those who are on the Okay, so tell me, what went through your mind after that goal and the celebration? Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, it, 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 was a, it was a good feeling, you know, um, it was a, a big moment for for me as a, as a footballer, uh, a big moment for, for Africa. Um, it was um, an opportunity for, for Africa to show the rest of the world that you know, Africa is, 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 is ready mm -hmm. and Africa is capable, you know, if, if only given a fair chance. And it was a proud moment uh, when, when I scored that um, opening goal. 
and the, the the celebration was was to show that you know I I had prepared for this moment and I was ready for for that moment and yeah that's why I was I was dancing and we, we were happy it was a moment to celebrate oh my god and and I know for South Africa you have so so much of dancing and the culture we feel it and I love the way Peter Jury went in with the with the, the gold chant and all but um tell me then how has this week been for you because you have been trending on Twitter, you've been trending on Instagram, you've been trending on Facebook. The whole world is looking back at the World Cup and you are the name that everyone's talking about. So how has the week been for you? I'm sure we had so many interviews. Yeah, I'm, 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 I think I'm, I'm, I'm the most important person yeah. this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, 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 it shows good that, you know, people still remember. Uh, so uh, people still appreciate um, the goal. You know, it's ten years um, later, but it feels like yesterday. You know, I've been doing a lot of interviews in, in South Africa, in Africa, you know, in in in, in Europe. So everyone, you know, wanted uh, to to share that moment and also to give me an opportunity, you know, to 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 tell the world how I felt about that moment, what it meant to me, what it meant for Africa, what it meant for South Africa. Right. So, Lala, I know that in the competition, South Africa was knocked out, no problems for that. But there was still one team that kept the Africa flag going all the way. That was Ghana. But Ghana was also knocked out, you know, uh, when we played against Uruguay. Did you watch that much? And what were the feelings when it felt like um, Ghana was almost there, yet that was knocked out? Um, obviously I was, I was disappointed when we got knocked out and um, uh, the whole country was rooting for Ghana, you know, um, and the nickname Bagana Bagana. Bagana Bagana. Uh, uh, yeah, Ghana was, was, was a strong team. Yeah. Uh, they, everything, uh, you know, uh, they did very well. They played very well. They, they, they represented, you know, um, the continent very well. And it was just unfortunate, you know, um, uh, the way we, we we lost to Uruguay. I'm saying we because I'm I was part of that. It was it was a World Cup for Africa. Yeah. And um, and they 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 made us proud. They they made us proud. And you know when it goes to penalties, it can it can go you know um, either way. But uh, it's one of those highlights as well that we will we'll take. And, and these are the stories that we need to tell our kids and next generations to come. You have stories to tell your kids. I saw the first goal in Africa's first World Cup. Just a final one uh, before you leave us this morning. What do you make of the performance of Africa in subsequent World Cups? I mean, look at our performances when it comes to Africa. What, what do you make of it? I mean, we... We, 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 we are getting there, you know, we, we are fighting, but I, I still feel that we, we can do more. Uh, I still feel that we, 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 we deserve to push even harder. And I mean, with, with the players that are, um, are representing the continent in, in the big leagues, I will definitely, you know, help the standard of African football and, and also the experience that they get in those top leagues, you know, it will benefit African football. And, um, you know, 20, 2022, I can't wait. Uh, again, it, it, it's an opportunity for, for Africa to rise, for Africa to stand, and for Africa to show the world that we are capable. Sipiwe Chabalala, looking back at those great moments. Of course, it was the Black Stars, the hope of Africa. But unfortunately, that South American nation, Uruguay, ended all of it at a certain stage that Ghana had never gotten to at that high point in world football. He is a father figure. He is an iconic figure. And he has massive control when it comes to the department of the game that he has manned. Of course, he is always a delight to watch because he brings a great persona to the goalposts. He's a leader and had the opportunity to actually lead the Black Stars to the Africa Cup of Nations 2010 edition where we won a silver. 
A tournament before that, Ghana had won bronze right here at home. Later in 2012, he was not exactly in the same place he found himself a tournament before. But well, there are stories behind all of these. Years on, he's a fine gentleman who has achieved a lot for himself with a minimum of 90 caps for the senior national team, the Black Stars. Of course, in terms of club football as well, he has seen different destinations in the world. Most of them in Turkey, some in the English Premier League, some in Sweden, and of course, the almighty Accra Great Olympics here in the Ghana Premier League. Years on, he's had the opportunity to serve as goalkeeper's trainer of the senior national team, the Black Stars. Now, it's 13th June 2020. The interesting thing is that on this 10th anniversary of Ghana's triumph over Serbia in her opening game at the South Africa 2010 World Cup, this fine gentleman also celebrates his birthday. Send in your birthday messages to the man, Richard Olele Kingston. Those of you who love to call him Richard Kingston, number 22, Black Stars, can go ahead and do that as well. Of course, as an iconic figure, he had the opportunity to also let his brand rub on certain brands, specifically the Calipo Fruit Juice and also Polytank. And I'm talking about its biggest in the range. The biggest 10,000 litre tank, um, you know, is one brand that was associated with Richard Kingston. So, a total story which we cannot tell within one hour and 30 minutes, but we surely will do our best. It's tradition here on the Joy Sports Link. Thank you all very much for joining us. Remember, we're online and, of course, um, on social media as well. My Joy Online TV, we'd we'll like to say a very big thank you to all of you who have joined us live. Uh, send the link to a friend and let's all be part of this very big discussion here on the Joy Sports Link. Of course, he is also very, very spiritual. And there is something about his Christianity that has always brought to bear on his game. He will be sharing all of those with us right here on the Joy Sports Link. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and my guest today is Richard Ulili Kingston, the birthday boy. Today is June 13, and it's exactly 10 years since Ghana triumphed over Serbia. At that time, the Black Stars obviously also had a Serbian coach. It was a very, very interesting moment. But welcome to the show. Yeah, I know all of you can't wait. Let's just zoom in on the discussion, shall we? Happy, happy birthday, Richard Olili Kingston, and welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Ah, look, how many years have we been talking about this conversation? Tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, it's been isn't a while. it? It's, it's been a while. Time. Yeah, right. yeah, Today yeah. Today is the day of the, uh, what the Lord has made. We thank God. Yes. We thank God. Please get close to the microphone. Right. Yeah. And you look good. You look good. Uh, What's I, the secret, I, man? I thank you. The secret is uh, uh, the grace of God. Great. Great, yeah, great. The grace of God. Interesting when the, stuff. When the grace of God is upon you, you still grow. Wow. We thank God. We thank God. Beautiful. Happy birthday. I mean, I mean, the, the least we can do for you is just to wish you uh, long life, to wish you, um, you know, bigger successes than what you've chalked in the past, and impact on the generations that follow you. I mean, um, I've seen a lot of the work you're doing with the younger people, and I'd like to commend you. We're going to be talking about all of that, but... Um, you know, let's begin with when we went on a partial lockdown and we had to, you know, everything had to close down, especially sporting activity. Uh, you have a football club, Emmanuel FC, and uh, you've been doing a lot of wonderful stuff. Um, how did you deal with the period? I mean, between the time when there was a partial lockdown till, till now. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, before I will start everything, I would like to thank Almighty God for how far He has brought me. And I also greet your listeners uh, good morning don't look at your time <laughs> we okay. always in morning good I see. morning is everything uh, greetings I see yes so I greet you once again good morning I'm greeting you good morning because I am blessing your life amen because joy comes in the morning wow so good morning okay uh, during this time mm. uh, for my whole life I am my own boy yeah so it's like something uh, like you have thrown salt yeah into a sea okay sea is the salt and you have thrown salt into the sea so uh, still I am very calm mm. at home 
I do my normal activities at home. Yeah. By the grace of God, I have my personal pitch. Yeah. I have my uh, gym as well. Mm. So I used to do what I know to do best. And also, uh, I have many activities mm. at home yeah. with my family. Wow. You know, so I used to call my friends, my players, to mm. encourage them. Sometimes I used to give them trainings to follow yeah. at their own leisure hours. Yeah. And also help people financially That's to joy ninety nine point seven FM. Oh. Yeah. And uh everything actually everything was great. Yeah. Uh I'm calm, I am happy because uh in everything you have to give thanks to God. And it is also good for I me. Mean, I was I was having good time to uh go close to God Almighty. Wow. Yeah. You you're very spiritual. You're very uh you know um in tune with um your faith and it it shows a lot in what you do. I mean there is the very heavily publicized relationship that you have with uh Prophet TB Joshua. Um you know t- tell me about that. I mean how did you meet him? Uh, what's the relationship between you and him like? I, I mean you've named your football club after him. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, I'll start my story from somewhere mm. and land on your question. question. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, since my youth age, yeah, yeah, I know God. Since my youth age, the time uh, for my school time, I know God. Yeah. You know. uh, one time in my life. I took a full decision. It was uh, an emotional story. So, so sometimes, if I want to share mm. that story, it makes me feel emotional. But yeah. I still need to share it so that the youth will learn something from it. Go ahead, please. Okay. One time we were at home, uh, and my late father, he normally give us all our school fees. Mm. So we all we all go to different schools. Yeah. You know, yeah. So mine was given to me to pay my school fees. And the others two were given to we also took their school fees. But later my late father called me back and he said uh bring bring the money back. back. Yes. Mm. He took the money from me and gave the money to one of my siblings to use my school fees to buy school books. I see. So later, I was standing in front of him and I said, ah, so who am I in the family? Everybody got one, but I got nothing. So it was like, wow, uh, I don't have anybody. That was the the day I took full decision to follow God because I don't have helper. I see. So God is my helper or God will be my helper. That day my eyes was full of water. I see. Because your school fees was taken from you and giving it to one of your siblings to use your school fees to buy uh, school books. Okay, so there, I left my father, my late father, but I still kept the tears because I don't want the tears to drop. So I went back to my room and I knelt down and, and I prayed and said, God, now I surrender. Mm-hmm. I surrender. Take me. Take me to where you could find me and use me for something. And I surrender. Even though uh, I surrendered, no, uh, I didn't disrespect my father or okay. reacted. But no, I was calm and I was doing my responsibilities. From there, my faith started growing. Growing. 
after three days, I had scholarship. Oh, wow. By then, this was in JSS or senior senior secondary? No, that it was uh, uh, primary, primary school. school. I see. Yes. Three days later, you had a yes, scholarship. Scholarship. I see. Even scholarship from the uh, uh, from the primary to the secondary. I see. Full scholarship. Interesting. I said no, no, no. I don't have interest in school, so I have to do what I know to do best because. It was like uh, my late father discouraged me in my education, but it's all happened for a purpose. So from there, uh, I fast more, and I pray more. As I was fasting and praying day in and day out, my feet grows and. My before <laughs> I was very rough. I see. I am not afraid of police. I am not afraid of taking me to prison. It's like somebody who is quick tempered. Okay. But after I took that decision, everything about me went down. I see. You can you can slap me, and I can even look at your face and laugh because I know. God's time is the best. So, from there, I started reading my Bible slowly, 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 to grow. Because you cannot grow in Christ without His Word. You have to grow with His Word. So, from there, everything was going on, sometimes our time. In good time. And let me use this also to motivate others. When you acknowledge God or appreciate God in your hard time, you have proved your sonship. And He will glorify His name in your life at His own time. So I was with it. Uh, I can't remember the year. I think, uh, let me, is it 2012? Okay. 2012 somewhere things were a little bit tough rough especially for my career and my marriage I see not like I am fighting with my marriage and my wife or okay my son, All right. because we want to give birth to we want to give a second have a second child I have a second child okay you know but it was very tough very very tough very 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 tough and the career also was like uh, like down the mm. career was down and I still want to play and I still want to do so I have a friends pastors friends they were also helping me so, okay now I was I had a dream mm. that I, I met somebody by then uh, I don't know TV Joshua. I know, ah, this man, I used to see him on TV. It was uh, this channel. Uh, is it uh, Krista? Yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Come, yes, sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, I said, no, 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 I have to see this man. And I'm going to see this man. So it was arranged by my father in sports, uh, Jay Sapon. Oh, Coach J. Sapo. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. And then one uh, former referee, uh, Aziza. Aziza. Uh, what, is the, what, is the, what is the Christian name? No worries. That's yeah. You can go ahead. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So they arranged everything. And I met, uh, I met Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua. And then from there, my feet also they're growing mm. more than before. You know, everybody watched what happened on television. I mean, your wife was delivered. There was, there was, they said that there was a spirit in her, you know, so they delivered her of, of, of an evil spirit that was, you know, tormenting you at home and all of that. Now, tell me about the reaction that you got when you came back home, you know, the kinds of reactions that you got from friends and everybody. I mean, um, did you have any stigma around you? Like people, hey, 
they said you know there's an evil spirit evil spirits is living in your house all as well uh i even argued mm. with one of my colleagues what i told him no my brother if you don't know the things of god mm. don't talk about it just leave it like that i know what i was facing okay at home i see so just keep quiet don't talk about it again even one of uh, my colleagues also said ah now we understand why you were always come when we were talking about these things so it was evil spirits even though that you are very strong and God's time is a very I don't want to mention it today. Yeah. But, but how are things now? Things after uh, that? everything everything is fine. Mm. After a deliverance mm. uh I started enjoying uh life. I see. Yes. Because sometimes uh, when this evil spirit comes upon her my wife will be very aggressive. I see. Very, very aggressive. So, so ah, what is this? This guy, this sorry, uh, this Woman. lady mm. was very nice, but when she became angry, and brother, you can't stand her. Uh, but after Joy, the religion, so calm. So, oh wow! So it was true that this evil spirit is tormenting her. Then, by the grace of God, also we had our second one. I see. Yeah. I see. How is he doing? Uh, he's fine. Mm. How old is he now? It's almost four years. Mm. I, I think three years, four months. Yeah. Mm. Does he? Does he know what you do? Your second child. Does he know who you are? Yes. You know sometimes, sometimes I used to take him to the gym, okay, to the park, mm. also to play football. Mm. So he used to play with us. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But one day I was there training, and I said, "No, uh, I have to break this uh, this thing that I didn't see my father when he was playing. Okay. At all." I only heard about stories, you know. Yeah. Him. So I said, no, no, no. So this boy also will not see when. Okay. So let me go back and play for maybe six months, because the first one was lucky. I took him to the 2006 World Cup. Okay, in Germany. Yes, mm. Germany. Also went to uh, South Africa. I see. And so he was there ten years ago when we beat uh, yes, Serbia. Yes. Okay. They were there. And some of the friends. When you say they, oh, he and his friends. Yes. Oh, I see. And they were there, there, there. Mm. and he he had the opportunity to meet some of the staff I and see. have a chat with them. Then later he became a uh, fanatic of football. I so see. So he decided not to go to school. He said, "No, my brother." You have to go back. You have to go back. <laughs> if you just joined us, this is a conversation with uh, your own and our very own Richard O'Leary Kingston. Today is his birthday, and today also marks a significant milestone for the Black Stars, winning uh, their first game, their opening game at the South Africa 2010 World Cup, 1 0 against Serbia. And of course, um, you know, uh, that was monumental because it was, uh, you know, Africa's first, you know, uh, time of hosting the biggest. Um, event sport wise in the world uh, you know on its own grounds um, Richard Kingston was there he was the man in post for the Black Stars and we're just looking back at so many things that have made up his story till now he talks about his son who's now four years old he says that his son must watch him play and that will bring me to my next question so you are still playing and you still want to play uh, I'll stop playing but okay. I can come back and play again Okay, you can come back and play again. Yes. Um, because you want your son to see you to play. Him, yes. Okay. Um, would it be for a club? Would it be for the national team again? Which is which? No, for the national team, I would say no. Okay. But, uh, for even if it is one or two games, yeah, for my son to see me playing, yeah, but for the club, but for the national team, 
Mm. Mm. So. I see. <laughs> Interesting stuff. You know, and yesterday as well was, uh, you know, 14 years since we played uh, our first game against Italy. Of course, we lost that game. Um, take us back. You know, take us back to these two key games. Uh, let's talk about Italy briefly and then we can talk about South Africa as well. Okay, with, e with, with the Italians, I think uh, uh, the old team was a little bit panicking. Okay, you were panicking? Okay. Yes, mm. for that one there. Is, is, yeah. it, it was another story for me on that issue. Okay. Because, you know, I was called as a fourth goalkeeper, but I, I was called into the team as a fourth goalkeeper. Samir J was first, George Yobu, Philo McCarthy, and I. But my hard working, by the grace of God, before the match, I was called as a number one goalkeeper. So you were the fourth yes. choice. Choice. I yes. see. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it took me a longer time. Emotional, hard working, determination to come back and be the first choice at Ghana Blasters goalkeeper. So bef after the warm up, I was. Come, but after the warm up, I started feeling emotional because, it's like, then my father, my late father, image yeah. came. Yeah. I saw my late father image. So, so wow, father, this is your job. I am coming to continue where you stopped. Wow. So interesting stuff. Moving to the park. I was off. I see. I was still in emotion. Okay. So after 20 minutes, I came back and I started playing my normal game. And the old thing, when we were going to the park, you can see the panic. Okay. On everybody's face. Everybody's face. Because uh, I woke up the first time. Yeah. And none of, the, none of us have played worker before. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very big stage. You can see more than 80,000 people shouting. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And the whole world is watching. watching. You know, like you yeah. are playing local. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. So that, that makes it a very big difference between uh, Germany 2006 and South Africa 2010. Yes. Because so with South Africa 2010, you guys just went in there and... I mean, you played, uh, you know, very yeah, comfortably. Yeah, even after the, uh, the the Italy game, okay, against Czech, we were we were free. Okay, we took it as normal. We were, we were just we were unlucky. We lost the game against Brazil, hmm. but uh, I can say that uh, after the uh, the Italian game, the confidence was so high. The unity. And the love itself, no. So powerful. I see. So powerful. Sometimes, if you are not smart, you may think that some players have gone out. But no, you can see eight or ten players are in one room. They left their rooms. Oh, well, so you were converging in one room? Yes. Just to do what? To talk to. Sometimes they play this uh, video video games. Video yeah. games. I see. Uh, they are there. So that was one of the things that helped you guys. Yes, you, it's unity and love. I see. Yeah, unity. And so, love. so you carried that that confidence after that experience in Germany. You went to South Africa, mm -hmm. and the confidence was there because you had had experience. Yes. So in South Africa, our aim was to cross quarterfinals. Okay. To break that record. So, uh, we were surprised that Uruguay beat us. Surprised? Ah, no, we will beat this team. They can't beat us. We were even thinking about meeting uh, France in, in the semi finals. Hmm. Because we are all blacks, we play the same football. We can match them. Even if you look at the young players among us, you know, they were playing like <laughs> they were just playing like they are playing local league. Yeah. Because we were together. We were together. So
so much unity, so much love. But it was very unfortunate. Mm. That, uh, Tell me what it is about the penalty spot and the penalty shootout that we still can't get right. Everybody, me, Ghanaians have a lot of confidence in you. I mean, and in that shootout, there was the expectation that you probably could have saved, what, three or four, you know. Tell me how it went okay. against Uruguay. Uh, uh, before we had the penalty, mm. you know, I had a voice in me that hold your heart. Hold your heart. Okay. Yes, I said, ah, what is this? So I was a little bit quiet, and it it came again. I was okay. Then I was just watching what will happen. So when Asamoa missed the penalty, I had a blackout. I see. Yes, I had a, a blackout. I said, "Wow!" So. This is what you mean. I showed my heart. Okay. Because like I told you, you know, we have a confidence in the belief that no matter what this European is, we will beat them. We will beat them. So when we had the final thing, everybody was jubilating. Everybody was happy that, oh, we have gone. So it was like a shock. Then later, I found myself that I, I am no more there. So I wanted to be changed because I wanted to be changed because I was off. But we have already used our three substitutes. substitutes. So I was off. I was just standing there. So it, it is to say that during the penalty shootout proper, you were not focused. You had... At all. At all. I was off. You were off? I was off. So when, when did you come around? When did you realize, oh, we've lost the game? At, at which point did you realize, look, uh, the after uh, Asamoa missed the penalty, okay. I told you, I, I went off. Okay, okay. I went off. So I was like, I was very light. Mm. I was not concentrating. I don't even know what is going on. I see. So I decided to go and tell the coach to change me so that and then you notice that we had, we had so exhausted that the our list day will come. yeah but then we have already exhausted the list yes wow so if you can see uh this guy uh, uh then aj mm. was motivating me so don't worry but i wasn't myself Wow. These are some of the things that happen, you know, behind the scenes. And the reason why we have these conversations here on the Joy Sports Link, we're just throwing back to South Africa 2010. It's been 10 years since we won that opening game. I don't know what you remember from there. I don't know what you remember of Kingston's exploits in the goalposts for Ghana. Send in your messages 0244 340437. 0244 340437. Later on in the show, we'll also activate the phone line so that those of you who can get through uh, can, can come in. Um, you, you, you have had opportunities to lead the Black Stars. Um, you, you got the opportunity to lead the Black Stars. Um, you know, after our third place uh, feat in Ghana 2008, you led uh, the Black Stars to the finals. Um, you know, in 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 Egypt. Sorry, in Angola. Angola. In Angola, 2010 in Angola, we played against Egypt. Um, we couldn't win the, the the game. We played great football. We couldn't win the game. What was it that went wrong for us? Okay, uh, before the tournament, uh, it is sometimes some Ghanaians discourage the team before the team even goes ahead. Even goes ahead. And how many people believe that that squad can get to Fanas? But we promised ourselves that we will get to Fanas. But to win the cup, we don't know. But to get to Fanas. You knew we were going to get to the final? Yes. Uh, another thing, um, I found out that you had a very, very bad injury getting into that, um, you know, during, during that stretch between the semis 
in the finals. At an injury which meant you couldn't play in the final. And an injury which meant you probably could have even ended your career prematurely at the time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as I was talking, yeah, so, uh, when we got there, uh, there was, uh, I think there was a crash between Togo and some military men at the bush. Yes. So, and uh, I think some of the Togolese members were killed. Yes, the, we were the bus driver. At the and same yes. camp. We were living at the same camp. So we all became afraid, but by the grace of God, we encouraged each other, and the Togoli and the and the Togolese were redrawn from the tournament. Yes. So we have to play high because. So we went to the stadium. Normally, we have to go there to report so that the the referees. So when we were there, we were watching Togo, no, Ivory Coast, and. Uh, working in Afaso. So we were sitting at the. So I after the game, we yeah. are going to play. So yeah. we have to report. So that, that, so, so that that will be a formality. For okay, me. okay. So sure. We were sitting at there watching Ivory Coast and working in Afaso. The tension and the pressure and the contact in the match, you know. And we have young, young players like Dede. Mm. Uh, Ajiman Bedu, Bedu, yeah, Opoku Ajiman, Opoku Ajiman, yeah, uh, Inkun, yeah, Asam, uh, Koju Asamwa. They are very, very young. So after we went to have a training, and I called them with Ace. So I said, "Did you see the game? This tournament is not for under seventeen. It's not for under twenty. Even under twenty three. It's for." Senior side, you see how they were kicking. If you go there and you just put your leg and leave yourself, they will break your leg. So when they break it, you should put your leg there. Tell them you are small, but your bones are strong. Are strong. And they were laughing. We went in, and very importantly, that training, my Lesson got injured at the training. So I have to. He was the captain. So now I have to lead the team. So from there, we were together. We played against Ivory Coast and we lost. I think three nil or three one. Yes, in the, in the opening game, I remember very well. Yes. Drogba was yes. Uh, was the captain of the side yes. at the time. Yes. yes. Then our second game, like today, guys, even in the dressing room, including uh, uh, Mr. Yantechi, Fred Papu, and all, oh, they were down. They were down completely. They were saying, no, guys, come together. Let us pray. I am here to go to Fangas, but I don't know that I will win the cup. So let us pray. And we prayed. And, we, and then the next game, we play against Burkina Faso. And we beat them. Then against Angola at the uh, quarter Fangas. Yeah. So, and they were calling us small, small boys. I see. So, so that you see, they said you are small, small boys. So just go there and show your smallish skills to them. We went there. We beat them. That was the day I had the injury. I had uh, the uh, muscle tear. Okay. Which doctor pronounced me. At the time, it was Dr. Persiana, if Dr. I'm, I'm correct. Anna, yeah. Very well. I went to the hospital with him. And then a doctor from South Africa, a South African doctor, said, this guy cannot continue the tournament. The tournament because it was a very long muscle tear. Even if you look at my right leg, there was a blood flowing inside my thigh, so I it see. was big. Even uh, my shorts was cut. So you had a swelling to the extent yes. they had to cut your shorts. Your shorts, yes. So it was it was very big, and I cannot I cannot even run. Since then, after the quarterfinals, I did not train once. I was only eating and sleeping treatment. So, I also like to thank the, the young ones. They used to come to my room and motivate me. Say, no, 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 you can't leave us here. You lead us to the end. So, after the game, I was asked a question at the, uh, the pre-match. Or the 
the after the, the press game, conference, the, the news conference, conference after the game. Yeah. Can you continue? I said, no, I will continue. I will put my my career on it against uh, Nigeria at the semi finals. I said, no, I have to play this game. If my career will end here and the boys will get to finals, God, let it be, and let them go and play because it was like uh, how we were treated before we left the country it has been like emotional we were praying we were fasting we were praying like uh, uh, like people who, uh, who, who, who have gone to uh, crusade I see oh yes we can pray three four hours as we are praying we, we, we also do the right thing it's able to do the right thing. So by the grace of God, we were able to beat Nigeria 1-0. Then we got to Fonas. And I told them, I cannot continue. So let, that's when the whole team has to take a decision, including the technical team and the, the medical team. Because I cannot play again. I cannot kick with the right leg. So everybody was like, no, Richard, try for us. Including the other goalkeepers, you are our leader. You cannot go and sit there. But get into the so okay. If that be the case, I will risk my career for you people to go. And that game was the game I was man of the match against Nigeria. Wow. I won the man of the match. In the finals, I was there. I was not feeling any pain, nothing. But why why did we lose to Egypt? Okay, uh, we lost the game because of the concentration we lost at the moment. So it was just a momentary loss of concentration. Yes, mm. and also you know, like I told you, you know, I put my life on the tournament because I wanted to break that thing that we can win the cup. So as we were playing, uh, one of our players, you know, I didn't see him clearly. It was like a smoke as covered him. And the voice came to me, no, this guy needs to be out. Substituted. Substituted. By then, the Egyptians' coach were there doing their things to see <laughs> what is next? So doing what? What were they doing? He was using some cards. Cards? Uh, I don't know. They have some uh, pictures. Yeah, because uh, their bench was where my post. Your goal post was closer was to their, bench. To their bench. I see. So I am. Um, so when the ball. So the coach was shuffling cards. Shuff cards. Yes. I see. So and the boys came to me again saying, uh, "Go and tell the coach to change this particular player." So the third time, I went there to tell the coach, can you change this player? Which player was that? <laughs> that, one, that one I will tell you later. You will tell me later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then, change this player. Change this player. So I got there. And when I got there, and something helped me there. And I took water and I drank the water. By then, uh, Opoku Ajima was injured. So they were treating him. So after I left and I went to the post, then they made change. The decisions made change. And the guy who came in the first touch was go. But okay, so is it that you also lost concentration or you had fear in wanting to tell the coach what you had seen or what? You didn't tell the coach what the voice was telling you. No. I wanted to tell him. So when I, I got there, I got to where they are. Mm. I, I, I got to where they are. When I got there, and something just hold me up. And I took the water. And you drank it? And, drank it. and then you went back to the, the goal And I tapped uh, Fukua Jima. Guy, get up. Get up. Wow. Yeah. So, the, 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 uh, Gado Mohammed Gado came in, came in, was substituted, yes, he yes. came and but scored the goal. For the game, you know, uh, sometimes people don't believe those things. People say w w uh, ways and means. Mm -hmm. 
how do you understand it? Somebody can cheat and win. Mm. It's a waste of means. Somebody can do anything to win the game. So as as a Christian who has faith in God, God God sees ahead of us. So I also took my petition to God to know the the mind of God. So sometimes I got revelation, directions to help the to do to help the team. So before the 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 final game, uh, I had a dream that in my own room uh, there was a center table and the cup was on the table. The Afghan trophy. The Afghan trophy was on the table, mm-hmm. and I was by the center table, mm-hmm. and the Egyptian captain Hassan also was there, and somebody was sitting there like a referee, and he said, uh, "One of you should take the cup." And we were, uh, we were talking. Take, 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 take. And Hassan took the cup. Then I got up. So you had this dream on the eve of the final. The final. So going into the game, you knew something was wrong. Is that yes. the case? Yes. Already, I have made that confession that mm. I am not here to win the cup, but but I know. I'll get to finance, but I don't know if correct. I know I'll get to finance, but I th- I don't know whether I'll win the cup. I see. That was the confession I made to them in the dressing room when we lost against uh, Ivy Coast when everybody was in our opening game. Yes, mm. when everybody was conf- everybody was disturbed, worried, mm. and I got up and I told them. Okay. So after he took the cup, that was the first time I lost toast. Then oh, the oh, you lost the toss on the yeah. day, I remember. And okay. It's that uh, uh, that competition in my dream came reality at the, at the pitch when the referee was asking the two captains to choose the toss. We, we did the same thing. He said, Richard, I said, oh, Hassan, Richard, Hassan. He said, Richard, Hassan, Hassan, Richard, Hassan. Then he chose the toss and he won the toss. And eventually won the trophy. He won the trophy. So Interesting. There is a spirit in football. There is a spirit in football. What what kind of spirit is it? Where yes, does it come there from? There is a spirit. So far as it has a name, football, everything that has a name has a spirit. So football has a spirit? Yes. I see. There is a spirit in it. Sometimes you feel yourself today you score. And you score. In, in years past, or in the last few months, we've had various conversations about this myth about the Africa Cup of Nations. You went very close to it. Now you're making this very big revelation here on the show. And there's some who also assign it to issues of the captaincy. Now, um, two weeks ago, Stephen Appiah sat here in this same chair, your place, and told me about the moment. I mean, earlier he had even told me about it in a personal conversation, that you gave him a blessing on the day when he was announced as captain of the Black Stars. And he said that he raised his hand in objection because you were the senior most player, and then you tapped him. How did you position yourself to do that, to, to, to step back for a younger player, a lesser experienced player, to lead the team? What was it that made you bless Stephen Appiah to go ahead and lead the team? Thank you very much. I think it was a uh, game against Slovenia in Slovenia mm. yes I remember even that game self uh, something happened at my home what happened? it was very emotional and very tough in the tw- 2002 or three of them yeah yes. get close to the mic yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was invited uh, my wife was not happy about it because she said the way uh, the nation or the FA is treating me. Uh, she wasn't happy about she it. She wasn't happy about Okay, it. so she didn't want you to honor the, the, the invitation yes. of the Black Stars? Yes. Okay, for that game? Yes. Mm. And she, uh, 
she was right then. Okay. Sometimes when I come, I will complain. I will forget. No problem. She still will encourage you. Yeah. So when I was invited, I said, "Wow." I said, "Wafi, I have to go and play. Then I have to save my nation, no matter what." He said, "No." When the insults hurts me very much. Maybe I didn't show it to you, so you don't feel it. Like, uh, for you, it's your job, so you can, you know how to handle it. So, so okay, we came to a conclusion that I will not go, but not knowing, but that no, but that no, uh, I have already given my passports and my my luggage. To a friend at home to send him to the airport to check in. So you hid that from your wife. <laughs> she didn't see that. No. Okay. So I was I was at home when uh, the team is ready to go. Okay. Or to leave to Slovenia. I had many calls. I said I am coming. I am now looking for a way out. I am looking for a way out. So, and they were to us locked the door. Wow. And we have uh, a uh, burglar proof there. <laughs> we can't go anywhere. <laughs> she, 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 I don't know where she had kept the, the keys. The keys. So I was talking to her at a place. Let me honor this for the last time. I will not speak to her. Say, okay. Okay. Say, oh, okay, okay. Then later she changed her mind again. That you shouldn't go. Yes. I said, okay, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. I said, get me a food. Then she opened the door. Opened the door. So I was on the bed. Like that. And she, later, I was looking for a chance to run. So by running, and I, my body pushed her and fell down. She fell down. Yes. And she, she, she that 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 time she was three months pregnant. So the, uh, the 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 dress that I was in, you know, <laughs> I, I went with to the airport to the airport and changed at the airport. You know, after I came back from Slovenia, she had miscarriage. She had a miscarriage as a result of that push. Yes. And you're running to go and play for the Black Stars. Yes. Wow. And then we were having a meeting. And uh, Apia was called as uh, uh, a captain. It really, he tapped my shoulders. He said, ah, no, no, he got up and told them that, no, no, uh, it's Olele, who is the most senior player here. So he deserves to be a captain. And I tapped the shoulders. said, my brother, take it. I will support you. Don't worry. He was my roommate. So I think I will support you. No problem. If you can lead the team and achieve what my heart is telling me to do for Ghana, and you can do it, I will support you. Take it. So you never, you you were never no, 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 not at all. fixated on the the, the armband at all. So, so how do you feel about it when you, I mean, when you look back at some of your seniors and all, and all those issues about the armband and who wore it and who did not wear it? How do you feel about all of it? Yes, and I feel, I feel bad. I say, why are you fighting on this? This band is just to differentiate you from us, but the performance is that matters. You can be a captain and sit on bench. In this captain's band, you don't take more than anybody in terms of salary, salary, uh, winning bonus. <laughs> you take the same. <laughs> so I don't see the reason why sometimes people uh, fight over it, and sometimes it causes distractions. Wow. Distractions. Richard Olele Kingston is my guest here on the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM. With so many people whose lives have been affected from those who have lost people that they love to people that don't even have it and have lost their lives.
Keep up alive a song by the characters band. I've been alerted by my producer Benedict Owusu that we have a surprise phone call from Labadi Beach Hotel. Our good friend David Eduafo is on the phone line. Uh, David, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Matt. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I, I wish I could say Blaubi, but you know I'm an Absinian, but it's all good. <laughs> but Blaubi, Blaubi, it's very, very much good to be, you know. Blaubi. <laughs> okay, so, so, David, um, I was alerted by Benedict that you, you, you wanted to speak very, very urgently on the show. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I know you have uh, all the love with you there, and I know today is his birthday. So we at Labadi Beach Hotel, I mean, we are proud of him. We we are so, so proud of Olomi and what he did for Ghana soccer. And, uh, you know, we cannot, there's nothing we can do to uh, kind of reciprocate. So we are saying a happy birthday to Olomi today and also wishing him happy Father's Day in advance. And, of course, after talking, we want to um, invite him for dinner with his wife any day from the 15th of of this month. That's from wow. Monday because we start operations from Monday the 15th. Wow. Then we are back to full operations from Monday the 15th. So, all the way, we wish you a happy birthday. We remember vividly when you and the team, the Blasters, were in the Valley Beach Hotel some years back. And I'm telling you, this guy is a humble guy. Man, I love this guy. And I'm telling you that we love you and the Valley Beach Hotel. So, you coming back here to have dinner with your wife, will be a, a, a very, uh, you know, nice thing for us to, to have you here. And so please, we would wish that you honor this invitation, come and have dinner on the house, we we'll give you some good wine, and, you know, you celebrate your birthday in the Body Beach Hotel. Wow, 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 wow. There'll be us on this one, dear Kali. <laughs> <laughs> no, only, only, maybe, if he sees my face, you know who, who are doing it because when he was here, we had a lot of chat together. Wow. Is, 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 uh, I mean, seriously, when he's in the first man, man, hey, there's nothing like Ole Lebi in the first man. Oh, and wow. so we are proud of him. We thank you. So proud of him. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. Uh, David, we're grateful to you. So, David Abuafo of Labadi Beach Hotel bringing us a very wonderful surprise dinner for Olili Kingston and his wife. Uh, you know, candlelit dinner at Labadi Beach Hotel. Lily? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just when you were talking about your wife, you know, yeah, yeah, great stuff. All right, let, let's read some messages, shall we? Richard Kingston will always be remembered for uh, when um, his shorts he was wearing got broke loose from him against Brazil in 2006 in Germany. <laughs> you remember that, don't you? <laughs> it was big headlines in Germany. Uh, I'm Samuel from Germany. I like Richard Kingston. Very, very polite. Okay, thank you very much, Samuel, who's listening from Germany. And once again, I say big greetings to all of our friends who are joining us on My Joy Online TV on YouTube. Now, Kwesi Bu Ofori in Chicago says, Great interviews on Saturday. Saturdays. You make my day. I just want to know if during his time, the Black Stars took any bribe in order to lose the game. I think I had an interview uh, in which he made uh, such an assertion. Okay, I remember what exactly it is, but um, we'll, we'll let him uh, respond to it himself. Um, it was something along the lines of uh, a betting syndicate wanting to influence the team. I'll let him talk about it in a bit. Let's do some more messages, shall we? Um, plus 233-244-340-437. Nate, very revealing show. It's funny how we see things on the other side of the TV. Kudos to Olele. Haven't seen you at Efes in a while. This is uh, a rich in Adenta. Okay, so they want you to report to Efes. I don't know which of the Efes uh, we're talking about, which of the hangouts we're talking about, because I know one myself. Um, Matt, I must commend you on your consistency in respect of interviewing and hosting former players for them to share their stories with us. By the way, happy birthday to Richard Kingston. Kindly ask him if it uh, is true that at a point he changed nationality to become Turkish and what occasioned that decision. Uh, this is from um, Wizi Ahiyable. Wizi, thank you so much uh, for keeping faith with us here on the Joy Sports link. Now, this is from Ralph Quay in Dansuman. Whoa, Joy Sports, um, you're on top. I'm enjoying the show. Happy birthday to Olele Kingston. God richly bless you. Uh, we need people like you in Ghana. Nathaniel, please wish 
uh, Godwin Kome of ACP Estate also a happy birthday for me. Okay, Godwin Kome, you share uh, this big day uh, with the legend. Now, um, Sakatu sends this one from Italy. He says, good afternoon, citizen. Happy birthday to the legend who played with Pele and his sons. Uh, amazing, but ask him whether he had issues with Samia J and what's his current relationship with him too and uh, he should name his uh, Black Stars all-time 11. Okay, um, let's do one last one and then we can... <laughs> and then we can go. I'm Chris in Tema. Please ask Olili how he felt when Diego Forlan's free kick beat him from the range. Many of us were of the view that he could have done better since the ball went through the middle of the post. Okay, we'll do some more of your messages as we go along. Uh, I'll be checking my personal phone as well because I know uh, there are loads of them that will be coming in. Let's begin with this last question. Diego Forlan's free kick, um, you know, it broke our hearts big time. Okay, uh, you know, the anger, uh, the free kick was pushed and position. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I made three man wall. A three man wall, yeah. yes. I made it. So, uh, doing that, you know, I wanted him to loop the ball over the wall. The wall. And he decided to place it instead. He decided to put the ball at where I was before. Oh, okay. So I moved one step to right. Then he played the ball on my left side. And, the, and then the, the Jamulani ball is very fast. I know it's like when uh, it's coming, it just make like waving. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, I'll accept it. It was a mistake because you made. I'll accept it because if you made a wall mm. and you were scored at where you were standing, as a goalkeeper, it's your fault. Okay. But over the wall, it, 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 uh, it's not your fault. So okay. I'll accept it. And I was, I tried to do my best for it, but the I wall see. was very, very fast. Very fast, I Very see. Fast. Now, there's a question about this long-running question. It keeps coming up all the time. Your relationship with goalkeeper Samia J. You, you mentioned earlier during the show that you were a fourth choice when we were going for the FIFA World Cup, yet eventually you became number one. What's your relationship with uh, Samia J like? Okay, uh, I don't have any issue with Samia J. Mm. Actually, from the beginning, Samia J is not my friend. He was not your friend. Yeah, he wasn't. Please get close to the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Samia J wasn't my friend, you know. Uh, Samia J met me at the Blast Stars mm. in 2000, I think it's 2000 or 2002. Yeah, he met me there. But as goalkeepers, we were like, oh, how are you? Sometimes we advise each other, you know. Uh, my aim was to be the best goalkeeper in the world. So I was always concentrating on that. I was always concentrating on that and training on that to be the best goalkeeper in the world. So my mind was not on any of them. That's the I'm talking about the blasters mm. goalkeepers. And I did not have any issue you never had any arguments, nothing. Nothing with Samia Okay. Do you? Do you? Do you? Um, I mean, okay. He's not your friend, but yes. uh, when was the last time you you saw him or had a conversation? It's very long time. It's been a very long time. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, um, there's a bit about your being Turkish, Ghanaian, you know, and uh, yeah. okay. Uh, I was playing mm. national team with Turkish passport and the Ghanaian passport. I was Turkish citizens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Same as uh, Ghana, but I was playing okay so uh i didn't change my name they just gave me a name and the name given to me by uh, the farouk was the president of galatasara i see then the grusoy was the vice president so they joined their name there are two names names and so farouk grusoy passports in the mm. passport. but why did you have to do why did you have to have uh, because uh, I went there as a young player. Player. Mm. So there, before they they used to 
play with uh, contingents. Okay, okay. So be, if I have a Turkish passport, no, I will play like a Turkish okay. player so that they can have uh, a chance to bring a foreigner okay. to play. So that was the reason mm. they gave. So it was more like a quota system for every club. Yes. The number of uh, foreigners yes. you can bring in and the number yes. of local players. Yes. Okay. And All right. The, the, they love him so much. Mm. They love him so much. I yeah. see. Yeah, they love him so much. So they wanted me to be there. I see. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't change my uh, nationality. That it was a dual citizenship. Okay, you 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 played most of your football in Turkey. Um, in, in Galatasaray, unfortunately, you couldn't get the playing time, but then you were you were sent on loan to other clubs and all of that. Um, you had pretty pretty much a lot of experience in in Turkey. Tell us about playing in Turkey and the kind of experience it added to to you. Okay, uh, playing in Turkey, it was a very hard time. You know, very tough as a, a young goalkeeper. A very young goalkeeper in the playing in Galatasaray, one of the biggest uh, clubs in mm. Turkey. So I went there as uh, 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 a young goalkeeper. So I was registered in the the young team or the second team. By then, I I, I was uh, a member of uh, the Ghana Blasters. So uh, it all happened. It was. Uh, a revelation mm. uh, from uh, my pastor and before that revelation came from my pastor some gentleman very tall guy he met me at the Accra sports stadium at the Accra stadium Accra okay sports stadium. we played against Accra as of folk mm. and the man came to me he walked to me and he said ah, well you will be the first Ghanaian goalkeeper to play in Europe Keep it up. Well done. And the later, my pastor also told me that uh, white people are ready to take you abroad. I said, okay, no problem. We prayed over it and it came to pass. They came here and they took me to uh, Turkey, to Galatasaray Street. But before then, you know, Apia also was lucky. He also was lucky. Stephen Apia. Stephen Apia. Yeah. So we went together. Mm. But it was unlucky that he was not picked. Immediately. Immediately. Mm. So mm. I was lucky and we were registered. And as soon, uh, after Stephen came to Ghana, he had uh, this chance with Indonesia. And mm. from there, Stephen Apia also uh, featured. In Turkey, uh, playing Galatasaray, playing with uh, Aji. George Adi from George Romania. from Romania, the former Romanian captain, yes. Yes, Philip Esco, mm. uh, Hillier, mm. then one uh, also from Romania, he also played Barcelona mm. with some other, other, other top and their national, they have national goalkeepers also in their team. So I need to be patient. It got to a time my performance was very high, so they decided to send me to loan so that I will have playing time. And I went to Saka and I played full season. Wow. And then I came back again. Mm. Then from there, I didn't have, uh, 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 I didn't have much time. Yeah. Much time to play. I played about um, four or six games there before I moved to uh, uh, different clubs in Turkey. Mm. So, England, um, Birmingham City, then Wigan. And then Blackpool. Mm -hmm. um, the switch between, um, you know, between uh, Birmingham and Wigan was pretty swift and fast. Yes. What happened in that instance? Ah, because the coach who brought me to Birmingham City also moved to Wigan. Okay. Yeah. So you know, with the uh, is the bathroom staff. Okay. And okay, I need to take you there. Go there. So from there, when he left, when he left the Wigan. Then the Blackpool also came in, but he didn't. He didn't, he didn't go to Blackpool. He left to another club. Yeah, he left to another club. Mm. So I was bought from. By, mm. I was bought from uh, Wigan, uh, Wigan to, Blackpool. to Blackpool. Now Blackpool, uh, you know, it was it was a tough run there. You know, you conceding goals and you know that the club generally wasn't also doing well. Uh, we were doing good 
from the initial we were doing we, we from the early stages from the early of the stages season. we were doing good but getting to the latter part of the season mm. uh, things were a little bit hard for us mm. but what was contributing to you know that situation in the in the club uh, actually we were also doing good training mm. you know in england when is getting to the later part of the, the season mm. the, uh, the 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 league becomes very very tough so if you are not tough mm. any team at all can come and beat you in your home we you were doing good but the features didn't favor us the features so we didn't favor you yeah. yeah we were meeting the top teams yeah we were meeting the top teams and they were also fighting for the championship. We were also fighting for uh, relegation. You see, so it, it was very tough for us. Um, only like you, you, you also, I mean, you, so you had experience, you were from Sweden, from Turkey, and then you, you got to England. I mean, uh, I mean, tell me about the differences. I mean, when you, when you place your experience in England to the others. Uh, in England, the league, <laughs> the, the 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 league there is very special. Mm. You need to be very intelligent, and you need to be very fast. You know, so I enjoy the game more in England than any other country I've played. You know, I went to Sweden also. Sweden, there I was like a king. Yeah, I signed three months from Sweden to England. I signed three months to play, and I was, by the grace of God, I was able to be transferred to Birmingham. In Sweden, I was like a king, Hammarby. I played, uh, is it 14 games? I lost only one, and they were leading. So uh, they decided to. Uh, buy me, but mm. the money my agent <laughs> gave them was very high for them. So uh, we were leading the the, the league table, and the aim was to win the league and to play Champions League. So they did everything, but they can't afford the the money. So I was left to England. But England, I felt more uh, competitive. I felt very, 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 very. It was a tough, so from England to the World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> so I see it as uh, the no, the 2010 World Cup. So yeah. I see it as a uh, normal thing. Okay. Now we're getting ready for the resumption of the season in in England. Um, there's a lot of talk about you know player movement, especially around this time, which is the summer window. Um, Ghana's Thomas Pate is is very very heavy on on the lips of many in terms of the the, the transfer talk and uh, where he should go there's a lot of talk about the possibility of him joining arsenal from from where you sit and what you've seen in europe uh, would you advise him to do the switch with your experience would you advise him to do the switch from spain um into the english premier league of course uh f in football it's a season okay and he has already made his name there. Okay. He, he, he needs also to go to the toughest league also to play. Uh, and I believe you will sell more than in Spain. Uh, Pate is young. He's now uh, coming up. So I think going to England is a, is a plus. It's a plus. So you, you would have yeah, you would love yeah, love for yeah, him to go. He has to go. Mm. He has to go and play. Okay. When you go to Leicester City, there's a story of Daniel Amati as well. Unfortunately for him, he ha he had an injury, and um, you know, um, since then, the, the the stability within the team and getting regular play is is a big problem. Is it a good time for him to go to move to another club? Yeah, of would course, you? it's a good time. To me, it's a good time for him to move to go and have a playing time. Then you. You, you brand your career again. But if there's a chance for him to play there, he can stay. But for now, the situation, I think he has to move. If it is not England or anywhere in Europe, a good thing. 
you can go there maybe for one year and play or two years too because you 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 spoke about you know the the man who made a big rev revelation to you and it came to pass as well about the fact that you were going to be one of our pioneering goalkeepers in Europe when it comes to club football that has happened now what would you like to say to these uh, this set or this younger generation of uh, you know goalkeepers who want to also achieve what you achieved um, you know during your time making that big uh, leap from from Ghana to Europe to play in some big leagues as well. Okay, uh, it's a, a very good question. Uh, as a goalkeeper, you don't need only to concentrate on the foot. You also need to have uh, concentration outside because you come from outside before mm. you enter into the game. So if you have problems outside, that problems will take you to the game it will uh, bring down your performance okay yeah so before they have to check their outside life if they are doing something that is not helping them to perform from outside they need to stop two they need to work hard as a goalkeeper you need to work almost every day you have to work at a lot. I think you came to my uh, that you saw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The pitch, the pitch yeah. in your home. Yeah, very big one. You know, with a lot of goalkeepers. So, what is it? Are you running a goalkeepers academy now? What yes, is it? I have a goalkeepers uh, academy. Okay. Yeah. So I have registered. Okay. I um, just want to put one of two things together. Then I'll open it for uh, for everybody. Okay. There's one thing I want I want to do. I don't want to take money from them. You don't want to take money? No, 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 no. no. Okay, but it, it, I mean, you're using resources and all of yes. that. Why, why have you Why have you taken that decision to do it for free? No, I I feel guilty of taking money from them. But, but it's not wrong, is it? Yeah, I know it's not wrong, but I don't. You are you are giving you are yeah. giving you know your technical knowledge out, yes. and you are, is within a structure as yeah. well. Yeah, because it was given to me freely. Okay. Yeah. So all those goalkeepers you are training, they don't pay anything yeah. to you. you no, at all. Mm. You and that's how it will remain. Yes, that's how I want you to do it. Sometimes my wife cook for them. I see. Yeah, yeah. It's it's something that uh, it's a gift. Okay. I can train you here and you enjoy yourself. This small area. Yeah, I, I, I had fun watching your training session the other day at yeah. home. It was wonderful. So I yeah. don't want to take money from them, but I would like to help them. And if maybe people can support to get the uh, the, the necessary the equipment so mm. that uh, we can use to help our youth to get there. You know, uh, people doesn't know much about uh, for how is playing good now. Which which of the four is? Goalkeeper Richard Ofori. Yeah, who, who went with us to the Africa yeah, Cup? He's very humble. He's okay, so hard. he's one of the people who has learned from you. Yes. I see. Yes. He's very humble. He's very hard working guy. I see. Very hard working guy. So I believe in hard working and discipline. Discipline is a sort of spirit hmm. that will always lead you to be attentive wow. of what you are doing. You believe when you cut this tree, you get the results. You have to keep on cutting it to, to get the results. Without discipline, things will be difficult for you because uh, uh, a talent without discipline it's like a, a woman without womb. I see. Mm. Talent without discipline. So they need to work. And we also have to help them and direct them. Some of them, their, their, their outside life is mm. not helping their... Uh, life on the pitch. The life on the pitch. I see. Not every life from the outside you bring it to the pitch. And as we cook personally, we need also to psych them. We should psych them. 
You talk to them like your junior brothers. Tell him you are wrong. This is no good. Mm. You are wrong. I see. Don't do this, don't do that. Don't say, oh, uh, if I talk to him, if I tell him the truth. No, 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 no. You are not helping. Tell him the truth. Wow. How many of them do you have now? Uh, they are they are more than twenty. I see. Okay. And sometimes the premiership keepers also. If you want to prepare mm. yourself for the league, mm. you can come. I can do it for you. Great. Now, um, you, you mentioned talking to someone like your younger brother. Your younger brother, Lion Kingston. Uh, you know, how's he doing? Um, and 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 how did you feel? There was a text that came earlier. I'll scroll it. How did you feel when? He was dropped from the, the first World Cup appearance, um, you know, in, in Germany. Thank you very much. Uh, Lai is doing well. He's also a coach. Mm. Uh, he, won he was actually here a couple of yeah, weeks ago. He won a cup with uh, this academy. Um, right, Rapid. yeah, right, right to dream. That, yeah. that was a, a very, very big uh, achievement. Mm. So I will encourage him to do more. Okay. The sky is the limit. Mm. And I believe he can do more. Uh, when he was dropped in the first, first, uh, mm. uh, that was 2006. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, that's that's one. It was a 50-50, uh, which uh, I would say uh, the GFA should consider because he has to serve two matches before he can start the next game. So sure. so the decision they took me. Personally I was not hurt much like the twenty ten. You felt that in twenty ten Lai should have been should there. Have been there. I felt so bad that I took uh, three or four goals against uh, Holland. But people don't understand up to now. When he was dropped, the pain, the, the pain, pain couldn't make him concentrate I in that game. I went off. Wow. Because he, he he deserves to be there. If the first one, if the first one was a mistake. Yeah. So this one, he played the qualified games and he's fit and he's 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 in, he's, he's in form. So why can't you take him there? So I was like, I even went to the coach. Midnight. I I knocked his door and I went there and I asked him, ah, coach, why? Wow. Why? I asked him person, coach, why? Not like uh, uh, lie to go and drop. And no, 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 no. He deserves to be there. You can even use that one to compensate him from the mm. uh, from the two thousand and six. But rather, he was dropped. And the way they dropped him also was was, was not was not right. I see was not right so uh it was a very painful thing i remember right. one guy works at uh omar fm his yeah. name is george yeah he was he did the that kangaroo advert yeah yes we were communicating from france so we were i said no you can't do this wow you can take him to the even if you take him then you don't use him fine but he, he sacrificed in 2006 Okay. Uh-huh. Well, I- interesting stuff uh, revealed here on the Joyce Bot Link on Joy 99.7 FM. Guess what? Uh, surprise number two has come in. You know, so my producer alerted me once again that uh, our friends from Eddie's Pizza are here. And uh, I've spotted Daniel Adapo. Daniel, get, get close. You know, we, we don't regularly do these things, but it's a special day. And um, we're just getting very interesting you know, uh, you know, walk-ins and call-ins and all of that. Daniel, um, good to see you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And everything is just amazing. Mm. It's been good to mm. be here in mm. the premises of Ed, um, Joy, Nation's Finest Radio 99.7 with the super guy, Nathaniel Atto. Mm. And, of course, the legend himself. Now, uh, Eddie Spitzer, we have a culture of rewarding people mm. who do good things and impact society. So we saw that your team, or Joy FM, and the mm. whole production team are doing something amazing by celebrating a legend like this one, yeah. whose birthday is also today. Wow. So we decided that, okay, let's take this opportunity to come and do something. Because yeah. moving forward, Eddie Spitzer would love to have some partnership with multimedia great. Great for, for this great work. Oh, so, great. Uncle, we want to give you this for your great work. 
Mm. The whole lady, this is for you. Three amazing boxes. Production two can support with that one. That's fine. But this is the barbecue meat lovers, and of course the supreme pizza for you for your good work for supporting Mother Ghana and for all the amazing stuffs you have been doing. And we want to say a happy Father's Day in advance to you. Wow. Legend of all time. Wow, 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 wow. Interesting stuff there. Thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, great, great, great to see sure, you here sure, in the sure, studio. Sure, and uh, sure, sure. like you said, Boom. we're looking forward to doing a lot of stuff with you. Yes, and uh, I'm sure uh, Max Fuga and the guys are going to um, lock something up very ah, quickly. More than glad to work with Very, very well. Yes, Charlie, sir. thank you so thank much. You. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you. Mm, great, 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 great. There, you, there we go. All right. So, um, interesting things happening here in the studio. Uh, we've had a second surprise within the last hour and uh, 45 minutes. It's Richard Olivier Kingston's birthday, and um, we're celebrating him and celebrating the achievement of winning uh, our first game at the uh, South Africa 2010 World Cup. It's, it's been a decade already, a decade already. I'll be reading some more of your text messages. I'm, I'm really struggling. Um, you know, I don't know if we're, we're able to do all of that within the time, but we, we'll see. We'll see how um, you know, all, of it, all of it goes. Um, what's happening to your club, um, Emmanuel FC? Okay, uh, Emmanuel FC, we are doing well. Mm. Uh, uh, it's a it's a team for Prophet TV Joshua. Okay, and you are the head coach. I'm the head coach, and okay. also uh, I'm and also a coordinator, like you say, yes. the C, uh, CEO. Okay, okay, uh, coordinator of Emmanuel FC. Emmanuel FC. Now, okay, so we're talking about your relationship with uh, Pastor TB, uh, Senior Prophet TB Joshua. Now, we, we have very limited time to wrap all of this up. Let's see if we can squeeze in this story. Um, so, the club belongs to him, yes. and uh, you, are the, you are the head coach. Head coach. What's your relationship with him like? How often do you communicate with him and all of that? Uh, very often. Mm. Uh, when, when you call each other, what do you, what do you discuss? <laughs> How are you, my, my brother? I hope everything is fine. Yes, and I also, if I have any, anything to tell him, then I, I, so I used to go there to okay. have some holidays, mm. go to the prayer mountain. I and see, pray. I no, see. And, okay. And, okay. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a loving man. He's a man of people. Wow. He's a wow. man of people. He's a loving man. Wow. We all wow. have seen what he's, he's been doing. Before, wow. let, me, let me wish him a belated... Oh, a okay, so he's also a June dawn. Yes, he celebrated... His birthday yesterday. Wow! And, wow! Uh, he just opened the way for me to celebrate my wow. birthday. Wow! Wow! It's a loving man. Is 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 doing good for Emmanuel FC. Wow! You remember we won uh, this is the late Anagla Cup. Jordan Anagla Cup. Yes, yes. Jordan Anagla Cup. Immediately after the game, he gave the whole team two point eight billion to go and share. Two point eight billion yes. in which kind? The old currency. The, the old so two hundred and eighty thousand Ghana cedis. Yes. To go and share. To go and share. Charlie, I want to register in retrospect. I'm a player of your team. <laughs> wow. We yes. walk through the money we share among ourselves. Wow, wow. He's been doing good. We have he, to play the Jordan no Black Cup again. Three days ago, he gave the team rice. Wow. To go and share. Wow. Pay the team very well. Wow. Make sure the the youth. Look, I'm going to talk to Kusichum after this, and do you allow me to come and do something for your team? Uh? Okay, so um, ten years ago as well, uh, Joy Business instituted, um, you know, a, a um, uh, small-scale business support program called My Business. So by the year, it's organized, it's named. So it's um, it was My Business 2010, the very first edition held in uh, 2010. Now, one of the pioneering businessmen on that particular program is here. He um, is called Tony Senaya, the CEO of Horseman Shoes, the man who got a sitting president to wear his shoes to address parliament during a State of the Nation address. Years on, he's a big entrepreneur, and he's also walked into the studio. Tony, good to see you, my brother. Niyama, good yeah. afternoon. Hey, Charlie, are you this big dear? When you do it all like that, then... <laughs> you know who told me? Yeah, who told you? <laughs> no, I can't mention on A. <laughs> <laughs> you know I know. <laughs> Tony, good to see you, and welcome back home. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nat. Thank you. And, um, what brings you here today? This is a beautiful studio. Well, um... I, I got wind that um, Richard uh, Ole Lee Kingston yeah. is celebrating his birthday today. Wow. And um, as horsemen shoes, what we believe in or what the brand stands for is um, people who have achieved, people who are horsemen in their various fields of endeavor. And of course, I mean, he's one of the greatest pair of hands that we've ever had. Mm. 
So I decided that why not take this advantage and associate myself with Olele and also celebrate him and for his service to Mother Ghana because I am an added um, soccer fan and I really enjoyed um, his service to us. And um, on my way, I had one question. In fact, I was discussing with my friend Atto, but you asked him about uh, We were having an argument about um, uh, what's the name? The, the Uruguay's um, yeah. the kick. Yes, wow. so he explained. Wow. I, 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 he said I should go and watch the video. And I said, no, since that time, I have never watched the highlights again. Wow. I can't. Wow. You know, but yes, he admitted and apologized, and I think that yes, I was very happy to hear from him. Richard, so I am here today to um, gift you one a pair of horseman shoes, and uh, wow. indeed, this design was given to us by Natalanato <laughs> ten years ago, so we named it after him. <laughs> yeah, so we call it Nati Look wow. in, uh, in, in our catalog. <laughs> wow. So I am here this afternoon, Richard, for your dedication and service to Mother Ghana through the Black Stars, and on a special day for your birthday. We are gifting you this pair of shoes. Wow, 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 wow. Lovely stuff. Yeah, Lovely it stuff also there. comes with a, a branded um, horseman face mask. Mm. So you, you protect yourself mm. with the shoes and the mask. Wow. So let me put it back in the bag for you. Wow, please. wow. Mark of uh, the Characters Band, a beautiful piece there, which uh, brings a lot of relevance to the conversation we're having today, giving hope. Uh, yeah, so just before you go, Tony. Yes, so I wanted to ask Olele one question here. So, Olele, some time ago you were trying on social media, people were making, I wouldn't say trolls, but making fun of you about your age. Um, like, for instance, when God said there should be light, the guy who switched, who, who pressed the switch was Olele. Did you see those things? Did they come yes. to your attention? And yes. how does it make you feel? <laughs> I <laughs> uh, know sometimes it's one of those things yeah. you know uh, you have to pay any price to keep your focus okay mm. yeah. great stuff yeah. great stuff yeah. thank you and now thank you, thank you very ho for the opportunity thank you thank you so much thank and uh, we, we love you we're, 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 we're glad to see you uh, you know soaring greatly after those years uh, after discovering you in 2010 during my business 2010 uh, of course uh, watch out for this space it's going to come back uh, lovely stuff there so uh, uh uh, we w were told that there's another surprise also coming up on the phone. I don't know what exactly it is, but hey, that's for later on. Um, are we able to even do phone calls at this time? We've got just about four minutes to wrap it all up here. Um, uh, Lily, so the next key thing which I would want us to wrap up with is what's the next phase? So clearly your career is not over because you want to play for your son to watch you live. Hmm. Yes, uh, if I get the opportunity, I will do that for him to see me playing. Mm. Uh, and if the chance will come, I will take it like that. Okay. Yeah. When will you call it a wrap? You know, for your career. When have you decided on that? Have you done that already? Not yet. Mm. Uh, because of I want to play for my son to see me. You know, I have, mm. I have not taken the decision of announcing my retirement but for now i am trying to help the youth okay what name do you call the uh, goalkeepers at your goalkeepers uh, academy rk22 goalkeepers academy. yeah rk22 charlie let's wrap up with the two <laughs> ads um you know you are the brand ambassador for the biggest uh you know size of polytank is a 10,000 liter uh, polytank and then you were the brand ambassador as well for calipo which became a uh, Richard Kissing 22 Black Star. <laughs> Charlie, was it your own? Were, were they your own lines or there were someone else as well? It was the director. No, it was uh, 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 Chester. Okay. Yeah, it was a Chester. It wasn't my own. It was. A, it, 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 it came from the Chester. So that was the direction that so you were given. Some yeah. people were thinking, uh, I am 23 years. <laughs> 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 but 22 was my uh, my favorite number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, used to play yeah. It, yeah. Sure. Not, not to play great, great stuff. Yeah. Oh, Lily, um, look, I wish we could go ahead, but um, we'd have to wrap it up here. Um, it's been such a great pleasure. 
and um, it's been such a wonderful and revealing conversation. Um, I've tried my best today to, you know, do as many messages as I can. Um, you know, um, let's see. Okay, so okay, so there's a message as well. I'm told that a designer, designer J. Ray Gatte, J. Ray Gatte, says that from here you should drive straight to his shop on the Oxford Street to get a full-blown kaftan done for you for yeah, your birthday. Yeah. So, designer J. Ray Gatte of, um, you know, J. Ray Gatte Designs, uh, thank you so, so much for this other big surprise. So, he says that you should drive straight to his uh, shop or on the Oxford Street, um, you know, by the Shell Filling Station. Um, you know, come straight, yeah, go straight to his office from here. He's ready to give you your birthday <laughs> treat, to give you a beautiful kaftan to celebrate you. And he says, I should tell you that, look, um, he's also very grateful for everything that you have done. And, um, you know, they, they salute you for all the hard work that you've done for, for Mother Ghana. So that's it. Um, your final message as we wrap up. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, all the Ghanaians for their support. Uh, and I will thank my wife, uh, my first son, uh, Stefan, is also being uh, supportive to my career. Sometimes he has to correct me on my mistakes on the field of play. Uh, I thank him. I will thank Prophet TV Joshua and all the Synagogue Church of Nations. Uh, I will thank um, uh, all my uh, my senior colleagues, especially Iman, uh, Samuel Osekufo, Sam Johnson, Yao Preku, Agasna Info. Uh, Abedi Pele, Tony Yeboa, uh, they were, they are all my, uh, uh, they encouraged me a lot. And, and the special one also goes to uh, Frank Amakwa. I remember in 1996, he told me, Richard Susuto, and I became confused. Say Susuto. So I thought he was humiliating me, but mm -hmm. not knowing he was trying to direct me is also and I thank all of them and I thank you and your uh, my family and everybody Lele Mashi, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm grateful that you, you honored this invitation finally. I mean, we've been going back and forth on it for a while now, and uh, thank you so much. We wish you well in your, in your future endeavors and, and all the best uh, with, with everything that you've done. So that's how we wrap it up here on the Joy Sports Link. Thanks to all of you who joined us across the globe. I uh, would like to say a very, very big thank you to all of you. Let me just congratulate my younger sister, Dr. Catherine Beko of uh, Tema General Hospital and your husband Emmanuel, you named my nephew today, christened him today. And uh, Araba Kumsin <laughs> is glowing with beautiful smiles.